Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. We are continuing with the study of Elisha and his ministry. Go to 2 Kings chapter 10. Uh, I guess this is part 4. Now, in the previous study, one of the prophets anointed Jehu to be king over Israel. Now remember, Jehu was a son of, if I remember correctly, he was the son of one of the sons of Judah, but he was captain of the, he was a major captain or officer of Ahab's army. So you better believe when you're a child of the king, you're going to get the best education that money can buy. And if you're in an area where there's a lot of war going on, you're going to get a military education. I don't know if a lot of you know it, but uh, General Patton, uh, a man that I respect, respect and admire and, and don't pay attention to that garbage movie that they put out in the 70s um, he was one of the greatest generals America ever had arguably he was the greatest general America ever had sadly he at the end of World War at the end of World War II he says you know we fought the wrong enemy meaning the Germans and uh, they killed him for it. A lot of people don't know it, but uh, there was a Polish, well, sh I should say there was a, a male from, who resided from Poland. And then if you know, the you know who's come from Poland a lot. Uh, at the end of the war, his airplane machine gunned Patton's car. I, the war is over. The war is over, and this pilot tried to machine gun Patton's car. A little fact of history that's almost lost. And then uh, they had that little car wreck. And for what I understand, Patton was fine until he went to the hospital, and then they broke his neck. Because he knew who was behind the Russian Revolution. And it's coming to America now. But uh, Patton was dyslexic. And he had read every war book at West Point. Yes, he went to West Point. He had read every book on war in West Point. Uh, you're talking basically like uh, a little over a hundred years ago, but he had read about Alexander the Great. He'd read about all the Romans, legions, the Greeks. Uh, he'd read all that stuff, and he was dyslexic. And I think it was his wife that helped him uh, get through all that. I'm not 100% sure. It's been a long time since I've read up on it. But but you better believe Jehu, who was anointed king, who was a son of the kings, and now he's on a campaign to get rid of wicked King Ahab and Jezebel's children. So let's read. 2 Kings chapter 10. So, yeah, I, I will almost guarantee you that Jehu was a very intelligent and was a very good soldier and tactician. You know, guy had an education, I'm sure, and knew a lot about uh, fighting. And I'm sure he had a reputation. I mean... You know, you just don't, uh, generally you don't promote stupid people to high positions uh, unless, of course, uh, 
Well, I was going to say something about elections in Europe and America, but there are no more elections. All we have is selections. The uh, well-to-do select who they want to be in power. And then they let us think that we're actually uh, making a difference. Uh, like Stalin, Joseph Stalin, head of the uh, Soviet Union under communism, murdered millions, a lot of them Christians. He says, it's not the vote that counts. It's who counts the votes. So, yeah. But uh, the point is, Jehu was probably very good in battle and just kept getting promoted. Uh, you know, usually if you have a decent system, you're going to want your best people at the top. That's just the way it is. You know, you don't hire people equal opportunity because of the color of their skin. Uh, when you do that, you could run into trouble. So, I mean, how would you like to be conquered by a foreign power because you hired the wrong people? Uh, so, Jehu, I'm sure Jehu was a great soldier and had an, you know, education. All right, so verse 1. And Ahab, wicked King Ahab, had 70 sons in Samaria. Now remember, Samaria was the capital of Israel. Jerusalem was the capital of Judah. And you got a lot of so-called pastors that uh, don't know the difference. Well, you know what? Let me tell you something. If, if somebody's teaching the Bible and they've never read the Bible from cover to cover, and they don't know the difference between Israel and, and Samaria and Judah and Jerusalem, obviously they're deceivers. That's just the way it is. I mean, if they are so lacking in Bible knowledge that they don't know the difference, they shouldn't be teaching anyways. But God's going to judge them. So... And Ahab had 70 sons in Samaria. Wicked Ahab. Uh, I'll guarantee you those all those children are not Jezebel's. I don't think Jezebel could pop out 70 kids. You know, and even twins uh, every nine months would be... Uh, <laughs> yeah, so Ahab must have had... Uh, some concubines, which uh, some cultures call them second wife, third wife, fourth wife, fifth, tenth. Uh, what was it? Uh, Solomon had, what, like 300 and something wives and like 700 concubines. Uh, no boy. Talk about uh, getting your ear complained in, uh, not even in stereo, quad. Uh, can you imagine that? Ten women fighting, uh, or how about a hundred? It's like, oh, I would go crazy. So, yeah, Ahab must have been really busy to have 70 kids, 70 sons, not even daughters. I don't even know how many daughters he had. So, and Ahab had 70 sons in Samaria, and Jehu you know, general captain of the guard. And Jehu wrote letters and sent to Samaria unto the rulers of Jezreel to the elders and to them that brought up Ahab's children, saying, Now as soon as this letter cometh to you, seeing your master's sons are with you, and there are with you chariots and horses, a fenced city also, and armor, look out, uh, look even out the best and meetest of your master's son and set him on his father's throne and fight for your master's house. It's a challenge. Okay, guys, you know, make one of your Ahab's sons a king and get your army together and you could meet me on the, the battlefield. Now remember, hey, Jehu's probably 
a really good soldier and he's got people following him a lot i'm sure and fight for your master's house but they were exceeding afraid oh yeah jehu's got an army and he's got a reputation remember when uh, they were he was coming to uh, the city where jezebel was and the guy that was on the wall the watcher said uh this has got to be jehu he he drives his chariot furiously you know this guy wasn't playing around now that's that's the bob uh not a translation but paraphrase the bob paraphrase it said he drive he drove furiously this guy is not playing around but they were exceeding afraid and said behold two kings stood not before him how then shall we stand now remember he uh jehu had taken out two of the royal cities and one of them was where jezebel was and uh he told everybody hey if you're with me throw her out the window and they threw her out the window because they were more afraid of jehu than they were jezebel verse 5 and he that was over the house and he that was over the city the elders also and the bringers up of the children sent to jehu saying oh here's the reply to the letter we are thy servants <laughs> oh yeah we we don't want to fight you jehu we are thy servants and will do all that thou shalt bid us we will not make any king do thou that which is good in thine eyes you know we're not going to make a king we're not going to fight for him you do whatever you think is right jehu and we will follow you no problem then he wrote a letter the second time to them saying if ye be mine and if ye will hearken unto my voice take ye the heads the heads of the men your master's sons and come to me to jezreel by tomorrow this time now the king's sons being 70 persons were with the great men of the city which brought them up so he wants uh 70 heads all of ahab's children all his sons rather that are at this the capital samaria of israel now remember all these children are probably canaanite seed i don't know that they are but but uh, they had a term in england uh you've heard of a regent you know you're talking royalty if you had let's say two kids sometimes one kid would kill the other kid his brother because he wanted to be king and didn't want to the other kid to, you know and sometimes when they were a king they would kill all the other kids just so that there was no challenge to the throne at a later date they call that regicide i think i think i'm pronouncing that right so jehu here is a legitimate heir to the throne so is he doing what the lord wills to kill ahab and jezebel's children or is he doing it for selfish purposes because he wants to be king and he wants no challengers personally i think it's because he's selfish not wanting any challengers but the lord was using him to get rid of ahab's polluted bloodline and guess what just like uh the herod the bloodline of the herod family same kind of deal you know it's a tough pill to swallow polluted bloodlines you know it's a lot of people can't stomach that but it's true 
You know, God didn't tell Israel to go into the land of Canaan and kill all the Canaanites because, you know, they can't be saved. There was no salvation for them. None. A lot of people have a problem with that. I don't. I know how what they are. They're satanic hybrids. It's not the children's fault, but, you know, it is what it is. They were never meant to be. And God's allowing them to punish his children. I'm sure they occupy the White House, the Supreme Court, the Hague, over in Europe, uh, London, Berlin, Paris. I'm sure they're everywhere. And yes, I'm an American, so I mostly know about America. So, now the king's sons, being 70 persons, were with the great men of the city, which brought them up. And it came to pass, when the letter came to them, that they took the king's sons and slew 70 persons. They killed them and put their heads in baskets and sent them to Jezreel. Yeah, Jehu, we ain't going to fight you. So Jehu got his wish. And there came a messenger and told him, saying, They have brought the heads of the king's sons. And he said, Lay ye them in two heaps at the entering into the gate until the morning. And it came to pass in the morning that he went out and stood and said to all the people, Ye be righteous, behold, I conspired against my master and slew him. But who slew all these? Hoo -hoo. Know now that there shall fall unto the earth nothing of the word of the Lord, which the Lord spake concerning the house of Ahab. For the Lord hath done that which he spake by his servant Elijah. Now, Elijah said that all Ahab's children, his descendants, would be cut off. Well, guess what? It's being fulfilled. Verse 11. So Jehu slew all, all that remained of the house of Ahab in Jezreel, and all his great men and his kinfolks, and his priests... Uh, no, these are not the Levite priests. These are the priests of Baal, the false god, Satanism. Until he left none remaining. That's called genocide, people. He got rid of them. And he arose and departed and came to Samaria. And as he was at the shearing house in the way, Jehu met with the brethren of Ahaziah, king of Judah, and said, Who are ye? And they answered, We are the brethren of Ahaziah, and we go down to salute the children of the king and the children of the queen. Oh, really? You guys are going down to meet my enemies, huh? Okay. And he, Jehu, said, Take them alive. And they took them alive and slew them at the pit of the shearing house, even two and forty men, neither left he any of them. And when he was departed thence, he lighted on Jehan Adab, the son of Rechab, coming to meet him, and he saluted him and said to him, Is thine heart right, as my heart is with thy heart? And Jehonadab answered, It is. If it be, give me thine hand. And he gave him his hand, and he took him up to him into the chariot. And he said, Come with me, and see my zeal for the Lord. So they made him ride in his chariot. And when he came to Samaria, he slew all that remained unto Ahab in Samaria. Wow. Now remember, Ahab was bad 
news bears. I mean, this guy was bad. Satanism abounded. I mean, big time. Uh, we can read about that in 1 Kings chapter 16 and verse 33. And Ahab made a grove. Yeah, he made a, a grove of trees to worship uh, the devil. And Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Wow. And Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that before him. So up to this point, Ahab was number one, top of the list, to make the Lord angry. And when God's mad at you, he don't play around. Let me tell you something. All right, let's see. Um, 17. And when he came to Samaria, 2 Kings 10, 17. And when he, Jehu, came to Samaria, he slew all that remained unto Ahab in Samaria. Now remember, Ahab married Canaanite seed. He slew all that remained unto Ahab in Samaria till he had destroyed him, according to the saying of the Lord, which he spoke to Elijah. And Jehu gathered all the people together and said unto them, Ahab served Baal a little, but Jehu shall serve him much. All right, so here it is. Jehu's getting ready to set a trap for the Satanists. Uh, Baal was just a generic name for Lord that, you know, Satan counterfeits everything. Satan calls himself Lord. Well, yeah, he's God of this world. So Jehu gathered all the people together and said unto them, Ahab served Baal, or Satan, a little, but Jehu shall serve him much. Here's the trap. Now therefore call unto me all the prophets of Baal, all of them, all his servants, and all his priests. Let none be wanting. I want all of them here. I want all of them. I want the prophets. I want his servants. I want the priests. I want all of them that serve Baal. I want them here. For I have a great sacrifice to do to Baal. Whosoever shall be wanting, he shall not live. In other words, you don't show up for this little shindig, my little party, you die. But Jehu did it subtly, to the intent that he might destroy the worshipers of Baal. Oh yeah. And Jehu said, Proclaim a solemn assembly for Baal. And they proclaimed it. So if you don't show up for this little party, and you're a worshiper of Baal, you die. And Jehu sent through all Israel, and all the worshipers of Baal came, so that there was not a man left that came not. And they came into the house of Baal, and the house of Baal was full of, from one end to another, full. And he said unto them that was over the vestry, Bring forth vestments for all the worshippers of Baal. And he brought them forth vestments. All right, so let's say you don't know what a vestment is. You know, you've heard of investments. Well, Look at the first four letters of that word, vest. Oh, okay, what's a vest? It's a piece of clothing. So a vestment is a type of clothing. 
Uh, you've seen Catholic priests wearing special garments. So, you know, it's special clothing made for the worship of their God. So he wants to be able to identify who these people are. Bring forth the special uh, devil-worshipping garments. And he brought them forth vestments. I want to know who's who. So everybody put on your clothes. Verse 23, And Jehu went, and Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, into the house of Baal, and said unto the worshippers of Baal, Search, and look that there be here with you none of the servants of the Lord, but the worshipers of Baal only. Yeah, I don't want uh, the, the servants of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel. No, 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 no. I want Baal worshipers only. Verse 24. And when they went in to offer sacrifices and burnt offerings, Jehu appointed fourscore men without, so that's 80, 80 men. And said, If any of the men whom I have brought into your hands escape, he that letteth him go, his life shall be for the life of him. In other words, you guys are going to cover all the exits. And if anybody escapes and you let them escape, you die. That's a pretty good incentive to not let anybody escape, isn't it? You know, that little ball worshiper might be your friend. Well, if you want to let him go, well, that's fine, but you're going to die for his in his place. Do I make myself clear? Yes, Captain. Yes, sir. I understand perfectly, sir. None shall escape. None. Verse 25. And it came to pass, as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, that Jehu said to the guard and to the captains, Go in and slay them. Get in there and kill them all. That's the Bob translation. Go in and slay them. Let none come forth. And they smote them with the edge of the sword, and the guard and the captains cast them out and went to the city of the house of Baal. And they brought forth the images out of the house of Baal and burn them. See, that's what you're supposed to do with satanic material. Burn them. Uh, that's in the book of Acts, even. They had books of uh, what they call curious arts, magic. When people got saved, they burned their magic books. Can you say Harry Potter, anybody? You know, these parents that have Harry Potter books in their house... And then they wonder why the, everything they do is cursed. Yeah. Let's take a little sidetrack here. Uh, Acts chapter 19, verse 11. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. You know, people that deny that Paul was an apostle you got to throw away the book of Acts. Oh, I don't believe in Paul. Well, just throw away the book of Acts. Rip it out of your Bible. Throw it in the garbage. Because they're going to tell you, oh, well, the book of Acts is wrong. Paul was a false apostle. That's what they'll try to convince you. When I hear that stuff, I know I'm talking to or listening to a devil. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that his body was brought unto the sick, hand, hand, handkerchiefs and aprons, and the disease departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Paul sounds like a modern-day Elisha, doesn't he? Well, back then. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. 
Ah, oh, these guys didn't know. You know, they knew about Jesus, but they don't know Jesus. And there were seven sons of one Shiva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? Oh yeah, I know Jesus, and I know Paul, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, and overcame them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and the Greeks, also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear, fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Amen to that. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. They repented and publicly had confessed their sins. Well, I'll tell you what, if I had to confess my sins, uh, it would take years. Years. And many that believe came and confessed and showed their deeds. Verse 19. Here we go. Many of them also which used curious arts, magic people. Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them. Burned them before all men. They burned them. Just like the devil's going to be going to hell and burned in the flames of fire, along with all the wicked. You know, the Bible is a seamless book, in my opinion. I see it. It just makes so much sense. And they counted the price of them. They counted the price of the books and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. That's a lot of money, people. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Where is this kind of faith today? Where? I wish we had a Jehu in our day and time. And don't kid yourself, people. Satanists and those that live in San Francisco, they know the Bible better than the average churchgoer. They know full well if there was a real, real revival, they would be in big trouble. Listen to this. Let's go back to 2 Kings 10, verse 25. And it came to pass as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offerings, that Jehu said to the guard and to the captains, Go in and slay them. Let none come forth. And they smote them with the edge of the sword, and the guard and the captains cast them out, and went to the city of the house of Baal. And they brought forth the images out of the house of Baal, and burned them. And they brake down the image of Baal, and brake down the house of Baal, and made it a draught house unto this day. So what does it mean, a draught? D-R-A-U-G-H-T. Well, the answer, Jesus gives you the answer, Matthew 7, uh, 15 and verse 17. Jesus said, Do, ye, do not ye yet understand that, that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth, you know, what you eat, goeth into the belly, and is cast out into the draught? Well, what goes in one way and comes out the other? And it goes to the draught. So I guess they made uh, Satan's house a toilet. That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> I love this. I love this. And they break down the image of Baal and break down the house of Baal and made it a draught house unto this day. Thus Jehu destroyed Baal out of Israel. Ooh. So, Jehu's got a good start here, but uh, yeah, let's read the rest. Howbeit, from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, Jehu departed not 
from after them, uh, after them, to wit, the golden calves that were in Bethel and that were in Dan. Now remember, Bethel means house of God. So if you ever meet a girl named Beth, her name in Hebrew means Beth, a uh, house. And no, we're not talking about the uh, TV show with, uh, what was his name? Lori, Greg, Lori, Hugh Lori, whatever his name was. Yeah, it was kind of an interesting show, kind of. T uh, real medical cases. So, golden calves in the house of God. I'm sure that didn't make the Lord happy. And in Dan. Ah, verse 30. And the Lord said unto Jehu, Because thou hast done well in executing that which is right in mine eyes, oh yeah, you did a good thing, and hast done unto the house of Ahab according to all that was in mine heart, Thy children of the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel. Wow. So the Lord was pleased so far. Verse 31. But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart. Hmm. For he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, which made Israel to sin. So Jehu started off really good, but uh, he didn't follow through and he didn't follow the Lord and he, you know, the golden calf. Now you got to realize something when, uh, Elijah and Elisha, when these prophets were going in their ministries, Israel and Judah are both in apostasy. I mean, absolute apostasy for the most part. Uh, and what is, uh, you know, when you look at Wall Street, what do, what do they got over there? A bull, you know? A bull, the bull market. Yeah, we're making money. Just remember, when somebody makes money, somebody's losing money. You know, it just doesn't, you know, when when you're, uh, that's just how it works. Somebody's making money, somebody's losing money. It's just transferring hands. So, but Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart. For he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, which made Israel to sin. Oh yeah, the golden calves. Verse 32. In those days, the Lord began to cut Israel short. And Hazael smote them in all the coasts of Israel. Now, who was Hazael? He was king of Syria. So, the king of Syria is... Uh, Invading the land and, you know, taking a piece here and taking a piece there. Verse 32, 33, from Jordan eastward, all the land of Gilead, the Gadites and the Reubenites and the Manasseh, Manassites from Aroer, which is by the river Arnon, even Gilead and Bashan. So he's taken some land here. Now the rest of the acts of Jehu and all that he did and all his might, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? And a lot of people say, oh, where can I get that book to read it? I'm not sure that book is even available. I should check real quick. So evidently they're lost books. You know, people read, uh, look at the book of Enoch or, you know, they read something about the book of Enoch or they read something about uh, the book of Jubilees. What is it? Jubilees. And there's another one. I forget what, uh, but they didn't in put Jubilees in the Bible. So I don't know. I kind of look at it as possible history more so than uh, scripture. 
Enoch is kind of way out there. I don't know. Parts of it seem true, and then other parts are kind of way out there. So I don't know. You know, some people swear, oh, that's Enoch is scripture. No, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to say yes or no either way. I've read it, but that's it. So, verse 35, And Jehu slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria. And Jehoahaz, his son, reigned in his stead. And the time that Jehu reigned over Israel and Samaria was twenty and eight years. So remember, Elisha is uh, having his ministry during this time when basically Israel's in apostasy. And uh, Jehu uh, probably killed Ahab's sons just so that he wouldn't have a uh, somebody threatening his throne. And he killed the prophets of Baal, but he didn't get rid of the golden calves. So, what does the Lord say about uh, halfway measures? Well, how about Revelation chapter 3 and verse 14? And under the angel of the church of the Laodiceans. Now, they had a church council, and the Laodicea was represented there, and they were trying to decide, did John's book of Revelation belong in the Scripture? Laodiceans voted no. We don't want this book in canon. And no, not a canon that shoots uh, explosive projectiles. No, canon as in uh, the books that belong in the Bible. They didn't like this book. Gee, I wonder why. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. You know, I'd rather you be cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. You know? Uh, either you want to drink hot tea or iced tea. What good's lukewarm tea? You know, iced coffee or hot coffee, depending upon winter or summer, right? What good is lukewarm coffee? It's neither hot nor cold. It, what is it good for? You know, Lord's going to spit you out, spew you out of his mouth. Verse 17, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods. Sounds like a Benny Hinn revival. I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Poor and, you know, blind spiritually. And naked because they have no covering for their sin. Verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. That thou mayest be rich. And white raiment. Who gives you that white raiment? Christ does. Washed in his blood. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. That thou mayest be rich. And white raiment. That thou mayest be clothed. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. A lot of people will tell you repent just means to change your mind from unbelief to belief. But here it is. Jesus, words of Christ in red, are telling a church, a believing church, to repent. Repent of what? Their unbelief? No. Their works. Their wickedness. Stephen Anderson. 
in Tempe, Arizona. Anyone? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also over, overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. All right, everybody, this is the end of part four. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.